Hi, my name's Andy, and today I want to share with you uh, this old radio. It's uh, a GEC BC5645, and it's uh, seven valves, that's six valves and a, and a, a rectifier, uh, VHF, long wave, and medium wave receiver. Uh, currently it's working. Uh, I'm going to open it up take it apart and show you the various components. It's a project that's likely to take me some time but uh, hopefully it'll be worthwhile and you'll find it interesting. So this is uh, a close-up of the front panel and here we've got the uh, uh, the on-off switch and the volume control. Like me this uh, radio has been around a bit we've both got a few cuts and scratches. Uh, this radio was made in uh, 19... 56 or thereabouts uh, so I was six uh, when this was first made uh, but we both uh, seem to be going well uh, on with our original parts I hope um, here we've got um, uh, the uh, wave change switch so we've got uh, VHF medium wave long wave medium wave it's not very hot I'm still like an old fashioned girl in, especially in those respects I surround myself sound like a bit of Dolly Parton and uh, what's that a long wave a little bit quiet Oh, not a lot happening on long wave. It's an Irish station coming in there. And then uh, this sort of setting says uh, gram, and that's for um, uh, a pickup, uh, a record player, or uh, some other input on the back. And obviously the uh, the tuning dial. So just looking around the back we've got the manufacturer's warning there and uh, information about replacing the valves and uh, there's the actual valve layout and the manufacturer's information. There's uh, one screw missing from the back. This is uh, for the mains lead and you can see the manufacturers have very thoughtfully put a slot in there so that you don't have to take the plug off when you take the back off and um, a provision for an external speaker, the input, so that's uh, when you're in the gram position, uh, you can take an input uh, into the amplifier, uh, external earth and aerial, and the VHF aerial, which is a wire in the back of this uh, cover, and provision for an earth. We'll be taking this off in a minute. So other than one screw missing and the, uh, the back, it looks as though uh, it's all there. Whenever you get a piece of equipment in, um, it's always worth having a look at the fuse to see what's in there. This one has a, uh, a 5 amp fuse. You could find a, a, a 13 amp fuse uh, in the UK. Uh, or you may even be unlucky enough to find some idiot has put silver foil around the fuse. Um, a 3 amp fuse would be more than adequate uh, for a little radio like this. Whenever you get anything uh, for repair or you're taking it apart, it's always a good idea to have a little container to keep the, uh, the nuts and bolts in because uh, it could be some time before you put it back together again and you could uh, easily lose them. It's also a good idea to uh, draw a little picture or take plenty of photographs, uh, particularly if you're not familiar with the equipment. And, uh, that's a little aerial on the back, hope I'm getting that. That's a, a, a silver foil aerial connected with this wire here. And uh, the radio has got a jolly good fur coat. So you can see this is uh, pretty dusty in here. Probably a bit of a fire hazard as well as a health hazard. Um, so uh, it looks like nobody's been in here for... Uh, uh, the last uh, 
50 years. I've uh, powered up the radio just so as you can see the, uh, the balance the light there. And um, there's uh, two pilot lights, but uh, they're, they've probably failed. They're certainly not a light. Okay, I've got the radio on its back now, and um, before I can take the chassis out, I need to take the knobs off. Uh, normally, you're, you'll find that the knobs are either pushed on or there's a, a little grub screw. These are push on, and they're quite easy to get off. Uh, but if if they're very difficult to pull off, sometimes if you just take a, a bit of uh, string like this and uh, get it under the knob so that you pull it off like that, uh, it can be uh, a lot easier. They say these are easy to take off. A little bit of felt in there between the two knobs, just remember where that's come from. I'm uh, working here on the kitchen table. I should in fact be working in the workshop, but uh, my workbench is like the bottom of a baby's pram at the minute. Obviously I've got the radio uh, unplugged. Um, I'm using a, a small paintbrush, you could use a softer one than this. I have to be particularly careful by the tuning capacitor. Uh, very very gently. If you bend the plates on that uh, you will spoil it. It's very difficult to recover. can do but it's difficult. Um, so obviously it's unplugged. Um, you'll hear people talk about using uh, an isolation transformer. An isolation transformer will not save your life if you get across the DC voltages of this radio and the conditions are right. So if uh, a bit of moisture on your hands um, uh, if you get across the, the DC voltage, um, 300 volts, 200 odd volts, uh, if the conditions are right, it will kill you as sure as if you've been hit by an express train. So um, don't take any chances. So always use an isolation transformer. When I was training as a radio engineer many years ago, somebody brought in a little Bakelite radio and uh, a pilot light had failed and uh, I could see it was flickering so it was obviously loose. So I reached into the radio and tightened it up and caught my wrist on the uh, anode of a valve and got a shock and I jerked my arm back and threw the radio over my shoulder and smashed it on the wall behind me. Not a clever thing to do. I've cleared most of the uh, cobwebs out of there now, so it's just a first order cleaning rather than spreading dust all over the uh, table here. What I should have said was to wind this um, uh, capacitor in you. Um, so uh, I was quite happy to dust around it gently because I feel as though I know what I'm doing. But if you wind it in, uh, and that way you you don't knock it about when you take it the, the radio chassis out of the case. Um, there are four fixing screws on the bottom of this radio and uh, the temptation might be to think that they are the screws to remove the chassis. In this case they're not. It's, uh, it's these two here and here. Um, the uh, speaker wires looks as though it'll uh, allow the chassis to, to come out and leave the speaker connected uh, for the time being. Uh, so we've got the knobs up the front so it should just be these two now. With the uh, chassis removed, you can see that the uh, paper diffuser for the pilot lamps uh, is a bit worse for wear, but that can easily be replaced. Uh, okay, so in the next video I'll start going through the uh, circuit diagram.